back to my channel if you're new here my name is Bailey and in today's video I'm doing another informative type video I am going to be doing a day in the life of having a new golden doodle puppy with Miss Ellie very soon but I just haven't had the time to take the whole day to film that yet so for this week's video I am going to be doing um, a video explaining all of the golden doodle generations so I know that there are a lot of different generations of golden doodles and different you know types of golden doodles out there and for someone who is looking to at getting their first golden doodle it can be very very confusing if you're unaware of what all of the you know talk of the f1 f1b f2 all of those things if you've never you know if you don't understand what those me. So I thought today would be a great day to sit down and kind of discuss all of the golden doodle generations and what they mean and you know what it takes to make that certain type of golden doodle. So if you're new here and you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button down below. It means the world to me when you guys subscribe to my channel. We are so 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 close to 10,000 and when I hit that I think I might die uh, but yeah we are so close and I'm just so excited to get there with you guys behind me so yeah if you're interested in learning the different types of golden doodle generations and what they all mean keep on watching so recently I've had quite a few people in my DMs asking about you know the different types of golden doodle generations what they mean you know how to decide what type of golden doodle generation is good for you and before we dive into this video I want to put a little bit of a disclaimer out there and let you guys know that golden doodles are a mixed breed so they're not technically a breed and I know I you know describe them by saying breed sometimes but they're actually a mixed breed and deriving from a golden retriever and a poodle normally um it could be any type of the size of a poodle you know they have miniature um toy and I think standard poodles so it can be a golden retriever and any of those and then as the generations go on you know different types but that is essentially where a golden doodle comes from is a golden retriever and a poodle also I know when I'm describing these different generations and talking about you know the differences between them that not all of those you know certain golden doodles are going to look a certain way or act a certain way or have the same hair coat or top I'm just being very generic in order to give someone who doesn't have the knowledge on golden doodles a little bit of a background um so definitely this doesn't like all this information is 100% accurate and will fit you know every single golden doodle but overall this is kind of the different generations what they mean and you know what um differentiates them from one another so like I was saying a golden doodle derives from the golden retriever and the poodle so the first generation of a golden doodle is an f1 golden doodle so so an F1 golden doodle is when you take a golden retriever parent and a standard poodle parent and you put them together and then that gives you an F1 golden doodle. So my golden doodles, Indy and Jagger, are both F1 golden doodles. I'll go ahead and pop a picture of them right here. So they were our first golden doodles and they are of um, the F1 generation. So that means they are 50% poodle and 50% golden retriever. You know, you can have it either way, like the mom could be the golden retriever and the dad the standard poodle, or you can flip them. It doesn't matter either way. That is the first generation F1 golden doodle. So in the F1 Golden Doodle, a lot of times you're going to find that they have a little bit more of an easier to maintain coat. They'll tend to have more of a wavy type coat based on the genetics of a Golden Retriever and a Poodle. And I'm not going to dive into genetics today because we could spend hours talking about Doodle genetics and things like that. And you know, what causes a wavy coat versus a curly coat? What causes some Golden Doodles to look more like a Golden Retriever? It's not the fact that they took on the Golden Retriever trade more. It's genetic. It's I hate when people say that. I'm like, no... They just didn't know what they were doing when they put those two dogs together. Um, so I'm not going to get into really any of the genetics behind that today because we could, like I said, be here forever. But yeah, so an F1 Golden Doodle is just that. It's 50% Golden Retriever and 50% Standard Poodle. Like I said, they normally have more of a wavy type coat. Um, a lot of times F1 Golden Doodles can tend to take a little bit longer to, quote, doodle out. So... When we got Indian Jagger, um, especially Jagger, I'll pop a picture of him as a puppy right here. He looked really a lot like a golden retriever. Um, you know, he didn't really have that doodle look at the time that a lot of people think of when they hear of a golden doodle. And a lot of F1 golden doodles, I like to tell people, you know, when you get an F1 golden doodle, as long as the poodle parent was fully furnished, um, you're going to get that doodle look. But sometimes an F1 golden doodle takes a little bit longer to, I call doodle out. So as they grow, they will doodle out per se. Um... Jagger and Indy um, look, you know, like golden doodles now. They're both beautiful, have these plushes, beautiful wavy coats. 
Um, they have great personalities because, you know, they've got all the qualities you love in a golden retriever, but also all the qualities you love in a standard poodle mixed together. So F1s are definitely probably my favorite generation as far as to own. But with an F1 golden doodle, you're still also going to get some hair loss and some shedding. Um, a lot of, you know, people get missed. Um, informed to think that any golden doodle doesn't shed um, and most of the time all golden doodles do shed because all dogs really lose hair um, they're not completely hypoallergenic that's a myth um, but especially with golden doodles you know you are gonna get some hair loss um, in our house it's not really like on my clothes or on our couch or anything like that but it does tend to collect in the corners of our house into like little dust bunnies but yeah that's really everything that an f1 golden doodle is obviously I could get into it even further and deeper but I'm not going to today but basically what you need to know is that an F1 Golden Doodle is 50% uh, Golden Retriever and 50% Standard Poodle or miniature whatever. They're just a Poodle and a Golden Retriever. <laughs> so then next you have what is called an F1B Golden Doodle. So an F1B Golden Doodle is when you take an F1 Golden Doodle and breed it back to a Standard Poodle. Um, and I'm going to be talking about all of these generations as being bred back to a Standard Poodle. You can breed an F1 Golden Doodle back to a Golden Retriever and it still be considered F1B, but a lot of people call that F1, like reverse F1B. Because when you take a F1 Golden Doodle and you breed it back to a Golden Retriever, you're going to get more puppies that don't have that Golden Doodle look because of the genetics associated with those parents. So normally what you'll find with an F1B, nine times out of ten, always ask Whoever you're getting your golden doodle from hopefully it's a reputable breeder but if not always ask someone you know if they are breeding it if your f if their f1b means back to a poodle or back to a golden retriever because the outcome of the two are very very different but for the most part an f1b golden doodle is when they take an f1 golden doodle parent and breed it back to a standard poodle um a lot of times f1b golden doodles tend to be you know it can differ between puppy to puppy genetically but most of the time it's around 75% standard poodle and 25% golden retriever if the F1 is bred back to a poodle. Um, and a lot of times they do tend to have wavy or curly coats and a lot of times they can tend to shed less or be more allergy friendly than your F1. Um, depending on different factors and things like that you know they can vary in size the same with an F1 golden doodle. So yeah generally an F1B golden doodle is 75% Poodle and 25% Golden Retriever. F1Bs are really great for people who do tend to have a little bit more of a dog allergy because they can be a little bit more allergy friendly because um, the curlier the coat normally the more resistant they are to lose that coat. Um, so yeah, if you're someone who suffers from a little bit more of allergy, that probably is going to be the better generation for you to go to. But if you do have severe allergies, I would highly consider um, going with just a standard poodle. But Ellie, our um, puppy that we kept back from Indy, so she is an F1B Golden Doodle. So we read our F1 Golden Doodle Indy with a standard poodle. So that gave us Ellie, who is an F1B Golden Doodle. But I kept Ellie back from that litter because she genetically is a plus minus coat. And I'm not going to get into genetics like I said again. But she is actually a wavier coated F1B versus a curly coat F1B. So yeah, that's kind of what the F1B generation means. And then you also have, you know, F2s. So you'll hear people talk about, you know, my F2 Golden Doodle. So an F2 Golden Doodle is when they take an F1 Golden Doodle and breed it back to an F1 Golden Doodle. So both parents are F1 Golden Doodles, put them together, and then you call that an F2 Golden Doodle. A lot of times F2 Golden Doodles can come unfurnished because, um, F1 Golden Doodles carry one furnishing gene and one improper coat gene. So when you breed the two together, you can get improper coat Golden Doodles, which is what causes the Golden Retriever Golden Doodle look that a lot of people blame on. Oh, they just took after the Golden Retriever parent, you know, genes or something. It's actually genetic. They get one improper coat gene from both parents resulting in an improper coat. Um, so with F2 Golden Doodles, that's a lot higher because both of the parents carry for that gene versus when you take an F1B, um, the mom or the dad, the F1, might carry the improper coat gene, but nine times out of ten, make sure your poodle is genetically tested because they can carry the improper coat gene, but most poodles are fully furnished, which is FF. Like I said, I'm getting into genetics and probably confusing all of you, but a F2 Golden Doodle is an F1 Golden Doodle parent bred back to an F1 Golden Doodle parent. And then after that, you can have an F2B. So an F2B is basically the same thing as an F1B. It's an F2 parent bred back to a, um, 
poodle. Um, F2Bs and F1Bs are very, very similar um, as far as their coat texture a lot of times. Um, they can do wavy and curly coats, things like that. Um, they do tend to probably shed a little bit less than your F2 or F1. But yeah, most of the time, they are also going to be around, you know, 75 to 25%, um, depending on what, you know, the reverse or regular, but normally it's going to be 75% poodle to 25% um, golden retriever. And then you can get into what's called multi-generational golden doodles. So multi-generational golden doodles, this is where a lot of people kind of get confused. It's basically that is what it sounds like. It's when you take two golden doodle parents that's further than the F like twos or f1s um and you get multi-generational so normally multi-generational comes from when you take an f1b and an f1b golden doodle and cross them together some people call it an f3 um, multi-generational things like that but multi-generational is when you have you know a parent that's deeper than those first two generations um, and that's what an F3 or multi-generational golden doodle is. Multi-generational golden doodles can tend to have different percentages based on the type of parents that people put together, but a lot of times they can tend to be 75% um, poodle, 25% golden retriever if the person is using F1Bs and crossing them together. Obviously, all of their puppies will be around the same percentage. You know, my Briggs that I just added to my program that I don't even think I've talked here on my YouTube channel about, we just bought a multi-generational generational golden doodle stud his name is Briggs I'll put his picture up here he is a f3 or multi-generational golden doodle same with Dolly both of their parents were f1b golden doodles and both of them are around 75 to 25 percent um based on their parent percentages um it's a little bit off but basically almost the exact so sometimes people say oh like my golden doodle is multi-generational when they're really not um multi-generational really means that you know at least two generations back were golden doodles um their parents so and grandparents things like that for instance like someone will call an f1bb multi-generational um and they're not an f1bb golden doodle is actually when they take an f1b golden doodle and breed it back once again to a poodle those golden doodles tend to be around um like 80 to 85 percent um sometimes even 87 percent poodle and like 10 to 12 percent golden retriever i'm not a huge fan of the f1 bbs just because at that point you're honestly almost breeding the golden retriever completely out of the golden doodle so if you took the like an f1 bb golden doodle and bred it back to a poodle again you would basically have standard poodle puppies at that point when you get an f1 bb golden doodle you should really know that you know that golden doodle is a very high percentage of poodle and they're going to have a lot of poodle traits and a really thick curly poodle coat um and yeah that's why we try to kind of stay away from that because i really enjoy golden doodles for what they are and that's a mixed breed between the golden retriever and the poodle um and i want to make sure that i'm keeping both breeds alive in my golden doodles so that's why we do not um breed for f1 bbs or anything like that um at that point my opinion is just get a standard poodle um but yeah that is done the same with f2 bbs so that's what that means if that's what your golden doodle is or if that's what you were wondering what the f1 bb means so overall that is going to be all of the different golden doodle generations like i said this isn't you know describing every single golden doodle your golden doodle might be an f1 and not fall into the different categories or description that I um, you know described but overall generically those are the most popular golden doodle generations and probably the you know different f1 f1b things that you're going to see out there when looking for a golden doodle it's really important to be informed on the different generations and what comes with each generation you know the different types of coats you can get um, the allergy friendliness of each generation and it's definitely something that you should really discuss with your breeder if you're looking to purchase a golden doodle you know the differences between each different generation and which one would fit well within your family but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it really informative i know it was kind of more of a relaxed chill maybe even boring video to some of you guys but i definitely think it's really important for anyone looking to buy a golden doodle to be really familiar with the different generations and you know what differences come with each of them so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and i'll catch you guys in my next video bye